somewhere along the lines, I think this series jumped the shark. Baby Rizzo here, and we're going to be talking about Apollo 18. Now, I'm not sure how we got from 13 to 18. There seems to be a few movies missing there. Maybe uh, some answers are in between there. But, that aside, Apollo 18 is a largely forgotten found footage film from, I think, oh, 2014, 2015, somewhere around about there. It's uh, an interesting little flick, but it has some problems, but I don't think they are too overall detracting. But in order to really discuss this one, I'm going to have to get into some spoiler territories and actually go and see it. My notes, I was mistaken, 2011. So it's even older than I expected, but it's one of those movies that came, went, nobody talked about it. So I'm going to talk about it. Now, like I mentioned, it's a found footage about the Apollo 18 mission. Now, officially, there are 17 Apollo missions. So this one's gimmick is that it's a unofficial upload to the internet on a conspiracy site that was, and the filmmakers took this footage and cobbled it together into a movie. And hi. Don't don't get her opinion. She doesn't even think we landed on the moon once. Anyway, uh, where was I? Um. So, like I said, this is a secret mission to the moon to set up a new type of uh, sensor to help spy on the Russians during the nineteen seventies. So, uh, try to beat them up there, get this in place, grab some moon rocks, and go home. But when they get there, things get weird. And some of the how weird things get are both the pro and the con of this movie. So, um, first off, I will go into a little bit about what works. The style of filmmaking, while is very good, it does look like old school NASA footage. They actually used cameras that were available in the 70s to make it look as authentic, and most of the film is seen through their onboard recording information. And so it's it does a good job of making the feel of watching like a documentary or some scientific footage. The problem with that is sometimes, particularly towards the beginnings, unless you're really interested in space travel, it's a little dull. Not too much happens at the beginning other than them going into space. And as there's not much problems as for that part, and while it does give you a lot of backstory on the astronauts, they're not the most interesting characters, unfortunately. They are very well acted, particularly when... Uh, everything starts hitting the fan, but until that point, it is a little bit of a slog, and when the movie comes in at only 87 minutes, that is a little bit of a problem. Now, the, the things get interesting when, uh, while exploring, they find a Russian lander. An abandoned one with, the, with an astronaut laying dead in the crater. So, the Russian cosmonaut is... what happened to him? And was there another guy who killed him? If not, what killed him and dragged him out here? And the movie goes from there. There's a little bit of paranoia. Samples seem to be moving around, being misplaced, and the cameras seem to be going off and on at certain points. So what's lurking out there on the moon? For the spoilers, Moon rocks. Moon rocks on the moon. Killer moon rocks. Okay, now I'd seen this movie a couple of years ago, and when that had, I had a little problem dealing with that the first time. Second time around, I knew what I was getting into and was able to give it a little bit more of a chance with these moon rock spider things. And while it's a hokey idea, which the movie itself. The effects are pretty good, the style is pretty good, the acting's pretty good, but with that as a, the premise of Killer Moon Rocks, 
you're only going to get so much mileage. No? Given that, with what they have, they are doing pretty well. Just having some of the samples suddenly moving around, like, at first you'll just see the, the astronauts will find them out of place. No clear indication of what happens, or something will move by the camera. Occasionally, like when the, you're going crazy shaky cam when they're crashing, you'll see the rocks around moving. And it does it pretty well. And occasionally you'll see some, like, spider-legged rocks moving around. <laughs> and then they kind of do something sort of alien as a guy gets one of them inside him that starts infecting him. And, I guess, psychically drawing him to a play. I think it's kind of unclear about what these rocks are doing. I think they're trying to breed in his body or something. It does a good job kind of leaving it sort of unexplained, but not to a frustrating level. Even though you don't know quite what's going on, that actually adds something in this movie. And the fact that when they're showing the bigger rocks off, off to the side is actually more probably to the film's detriment. If they'd showed a little bit less of what was lurking, it might have worked better with this cheesy premise. I mean, if it was something else, showing it a little bit could work. This case, 50-50 mixed bag. I mean, one scene where he has one in his helmet and it's just um, <laughs> crawling around in it, that was cool. But you see it quick and from a distance. You can't quite make out what's going on. When uh, you get more ones that, well, they are still not seen very clearly, it does get a little... Mm, the film's most effective when um, one, the one astronaut who's infected gets a little sort of whacked out on whatever's coursing through him. He's warning the guy to get away, but at the same time talking ominous and being just in generally intimidating. He was very good. So it's hard to really grade this one as great execution overall, but the plot line itself is a bit ridiculous. Though the acting does kind of pull it above, particularly the despair that one of the astronauts is getting towards the end. But I think this one, despite some ups and downs, I'll give it a solid three. It's not bad by any means, but for a found footage one, it does enough that it makes it work. Now, this one advertises as, uh, like, uh, what was it? It was uh, lo uh, then LunarTruth.com is the site that the, all this information supposedly comes from. Apparently at the time, that would redirect to this film's website. I did a double check. That website is now non-existent, despite this movie advertising it at both the beginning and at the end. No, no, don't give that movie this much attention. Just a little. Just a little bit. We don't know this one. This one's not that good. It's a three. It's not a five. Maybe she liked it better than I did. Well, anyway. Um, so yeah, Solid Three MacGuffins, it's worth seeing. But you have to be... I don't know if knowing what you're going in for will make it better, because the mystery element does is good. But what you're... Then what's dropped in front of you is... I mean, the ominousness of... Them noting that several moon samples have gone missing since they've brought them back it does lead a little bit into some interesting conspiracy theory territory. And I wanted this one to be better, to be honest. I when I first saw the stuff on it, I was intrigued. I had hopes for this one, and it was only okay. Despite the cheesiness of the thing, it's still worth seeing. Three out of five. Okay. Now, I don't know where the rest of the movies are. I haven't even seen Apollo 1. I where Apollo Creed fits in. Anyway, uh, I guess that's it for this one. Apollo 18.